that. An excellent example of that is President Obama, an absolute expert in the use of hypnotic style of oration in order to create the effect of truth. But I suggest to all who have now heard President Obama speak that if you were to go back now and listen to his recordings, particularly recordings without the visual, you would probably find that the message is far less significant than what you first felt and that you can see that it is nothing more than formula. There is no truth to what he speaks. He is merely using techniques to hypnotize the audience. So our ancestors considered writing as an absolute disgrace. And language evolved on these principles. Not even the Romans had a written language, believe it or not. The Romans, who themselves were exiles of the Yahudi, who we otherwise known as the Israelites, took the Etruscan language and Mira reversed it and called it Latin. Language in a writing style came in quite late and was objected to by many, many civilizations. The hardcore Yahudi refused for many centuries beyond the Romans to have a written language. Hence why Hebrew was so late in being developed. So it is how we speak, is how we conduct ourselves, how we express our will. And whilst we work on the will and testament, our, our will and expressing our will is simply and clearly as as saying, this is my will. But it requires us to be clear and know who we are. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we've been brought up to believe, or if we've found ourselves in trouble, we've been brought up to be told by others that paper is the key. Well, let's talk about Roman procedure now. I think I've said enough about the executive. I think I've said enough about the the role. But let's talk about Roman procedure and some knowledge that may well be useful to us in preparing documents. And you'll see this reflected on the sites like globe-union-court.org and the other court sites where we've now put the reference material. Roman procedure where form is placed over substance, has become a fine art. And there are some basic principles that we need to follow here. And if we miss those basic principles, we will find ourselves time and time again encountering problems. Let's begin with the first. As a matter of argument, and as a matter of principle, one cause leads to one action of procedure which leads to one primary argument. Let me say that again because it may sound simple. It may in fact sound self-evident but it's something we don't always follow. One cause of action, one controversy leads to One argument leads to one procedure. Now, if you start a procedure in the Roman system, and those procedures in the Roman system are their procedures, we get confused about public and private. Let's say this again. The court says, and the Roman system says, that if it is not their form, they cannot see it. 
Now, their form is defined by their statutes, their policies. And when you consider their form, the first and most important thing about form is the title. If they call a deed a deed, then that is the title of the instrument, the title of the form, a deed. If they call a form a revocation of power of attorney, then that is the name of the form, revocation of power of attorney. Don't get creative. If they call the form an affidavit, call it an affidavit. Don't call it an affidavit of truth. If the form is called a will and testament, it's a will and testament. It's not a living will and testament. And I suggest to you one of the most common mistakes where people are presenting to you and presenting to many what they claim to be remedy, administrative remedy, fails to get through the first hurdle by creatively changing titles to instruments which are defined by statute. And if the title changes, the form changes, if the form changes, it renders the form null and void and they will not act on it. How frustrating is that? You could have spent weeks on a defence preparing your affidavit, preparing your instruments, but because someone said to you, change the title to this as a public document, you change the title, you change the form, you change the form, you render it null and void. The procedure is also defined by statute. You follow a procedure, you follow the procedure in steps. Think of a game of chess. Certain pieces can do certain things, but always it is one move and a response. One move and a response. How many times have we tried to send into their system an instrument that attempts to be three things? Not only do we change the name of the instrument, but we attempt to do three things in an instrument. Why? Because someone told us that that worked. One cause, one argument, one procedure of action. If procedure means that you've got to revoke the power of attorney, that's one action. That's one form. If then there is a motion, that's one action. That's one form. Now, these are common mistakes that we continue to make over and over again. Another classic mistake that we make with documentation. And again, I'm, I, I, this documentation, these hints will be on these court sites. But another classic we make is we throw everything and the kitchen sink when we seek to have a matter removed. How many times have we sent documents through where we've cut and pasted things, and people have done this already, they've cut and pasted things out of Eucadia or One Heaven, or they've taken cuts and pastes out of different people and they've put in their documents and said, there you go, here's a history lesson, here's a motion, here's an argument. And you know what? We make it easy for them. Because then they don't have to do any, any, any work. They look at these documents and say, here's another sovereign, well, they say it, I'll, I'll say the word, they say, here's another sovereign idiot, or here's another free man nutter. We make it easy for them. We sing and dance to their image of us. Why? Because we throw everything at them without thinking through what is the primary strength of argument. I'll give you, give you an example. I'll give you a classic example of where we miss the, miss the point. Let's talk about foreclosure. I'll be coming back to foreclosure when we talk about sockage in a moment. But let's talk about foreclosure as an example of where we fall with our administrative procedures in their public system. Now, you'll find a range of people say you want to argue against the debt. The debt's not there because the debt's been paid. Well, I tell you, when you go to court, the debt is there 
and there is no way of avoiding that debt. You can argue all you like that you don't owe the debt that you're going to lose. It's a wrong argument. Completely the wrong argument. Yes, the bank has gone and converted the promissory notes and the loan and received some accounting, some tracing, some payment for that. That is part of the issue, that they haven't disclosed what has been paid. They haven't brought that in and, and equalised the books. They haven't maintained the account as trustees. They have been bereft of their diligence in not maintaining the arrangement. That is part of the failing. Another part of the failing is the fact that your maintenance of the property, your costs of upkeep are not reflected on the balance sheet. So instead of the argument being, how dare they convert this loan and deceive us? How dare they argue that the loan is delayed because they've already received their money? It is absolutely we signed an agreement for a loan. And absolutely we agreed for them to convert it. So what did you do with our permission? We gave you permission. We signed the contract. What did you do? Because guess what? I don't see any documents from you telling me who you sold the loan to. When I signed the contract saying you could, you haven't come back. You haven't told us how much you sold it for. And I don't see anything on the accounts here to recognise the fact that we paid the rates. Where's that in the accounting? Let's add up all those figures and see what happens. And you know what? When you follow that argument as a proper accounting and don't fight the wrong horse, they owe you money. They owe you money. So what we've been doing, and it is utter madness, because it is a universal problem out there. We are collecting. And you hear this people say, oh, well, I don't follow one thing, okay, as if you're following horses. Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a horse in a race, but if you want to think me as a horse in a race, okay. People say, oh, well, I don't follow this. I take a bit of this and I take a bit of that, and, and that's what I do. I collect people's bits and pieces, and then I do my own thing. Well, if you do your own thing, and you throw everything in the kitchen sink, then nothing will work. Why? Let's go back to the positive law. I said the positive law gives you argument. Why? Go down and have a look at logic and the argument of logic and fallacy. If one of your arguments is false, then the court can argue it's all false. If one of your arguments is irrelevant, they can argue it's all irrelevant. How many of you have faced the indignance of going to court and the first motion for the plaintiff against you is motion uh, to have your um, material struck from the record, even if you've gone through some elaborate notorial procedure? Why? Because in your material you have added stuff in that has got no relevance to the matter at hand. One Controversy, one action, one procedure, one key argument that they cannot win. A bank cannot deny that they have sold the mortgage. They can't deny it. They need you to be fighting the losing battle on the loan because once you let that one go through and once you start arguing that the accounting has not been done and they have failed to provide the tracing as trustees, then they have a problem. They have a real problem. Because at the end of the day, the accounting will show when they show your upkeep and the sale and the fact that all of that needs to be balanced out because the sale is based on the original contract. They can't separate it. They owe you money. So in summary, what we've been speaking about in terms of Roman administrative procedure. First and foremost, I cannot 
make it any easier that you need to do that legwork in reading and getting on top of 